back of disobedient objects, an exhibition I did at the V&A last year about objects from protest movements internationally. Someone got in touch with me and said, can you do something like that here? So I helped out putting some of this Gorilla Island section at Dismalland together. I did a little exhibition that's kind of the opposite of disobedient objects called Museum of Cruel Designs and it's objects of social control. It tells you about the history of those objects and about social policy through those objects. So everything from border fences to the display about the militarisation of the police in the UK and stuff for controlling people at work and of course CCTV. The idea is that someone had to sit down and make those things. At some point someone went, oh, I'll invent anti-homeless bikes. How sharp shall I make them? Someone made those decisions. It's kind of an interesting way to approach it that's accessible for a lot of people. Then there's a tent over here which has different kind of stalls laid out by different activist groups. I gave them some historical examples of like constructivists setting up propaganda trains in Russia, all the different ways that people have tried to use art to engage with people. And I was like, if we give you a space, what would you do with it? So we've got Acorn from Bristol who are a community union campaigning on housing issues. They've been using it as a kind of recruitment stall and they picked up more members than they can process. So it's been great for them. We had Occupy Design with their bike sound system and a load of posters with infographics. Stripe Magazine, their story was that they read about how Noam Chomsky got into radical politics through hanging out around newsstands in New York where they had anarchist newspapers and that was his way in. So they built their own anarchist newsstand to distribute stuff to people. We have a big display of stuff that's similar to what was in Disobedient Objects. We've got banners, uh, placards and kind of very international. Well, I did this uh, Pocket Money Loans as a project in uh, North London at the Atom Gallery last year, and um, it's, a, it's a proper payday loan shop for kids just in the high street. And uh, some of the people who are working with Banksy asked me if I wanted to do Pocket Money Loans at an art festival. They didn't tell me anything specific about what it was actually going to be like. And, um, and who was involved. There's constant people coming in there and it's just, it seems to be like a really uh, wide cross-section of the, the public. Like you get like kind of soldiers and taxi drivers and uh, nurses and teachers. And the action has just been amazing across the board. People that wouldn't necessarily share my opinions on other things, they've had a laugh at something else that I've done and stuff like that. I haven't been able to give out any child loans in the shop, like none of the kids actually want one, so it's a bit of a disaster for me. harder and harder to ignore politics really because the effects of it are happening to more and more of us and if artists are trying to make work about life and they're not including politics in that then they're ignoring one of the major forces that acts on human beings. The thing with someone like Banksy, some people are a bit funny about him being very commercial but he brings in people to this who would never otherwise encounter these kinds of politics. Banksy in a way kind of acts as like a gateway drug for the rest of us over here in this corner. Because people are willing to look at like the refugee boats or some of his other stuff that's kind of a little bit political, raises an issue and get into it and then they come to this section. It's kind of, are you willing to go that little bit step further and actually get involved in a group or like confront the actual issues in real ways that you can do something about them rather than just kind of observe them and think about them. Add Space Hack Pack. The essential keys to break into advertising. These set of keys will get into a massive percentage of UK bus stop advertising cabinets. What you do with the keys is go through the side of the case, you engage a bar that's installed horizontally, the key goes through the case, connects with the bar, turn the key, rotate, which rotates the bar, which delatches the door, which is on a spring. I'll show you the bar that you turn. It's this 
this bar that's on bus stop shelters isn't installed vertically, it's installed horizontally. When the key goes through the case, engages with the bottom of the bar, turn the key, rotates the bar, D latches the door. You roll the poster upwards to a position here. There's a metal strip which is a retention strip that holds the poster in place. Pull the poster out the retention strip, put your new poster into, underneath the retention strip, roll the poster downwards, use these brackets for a guide for straightness, get the poster to that position, shut the cabinet door, push it to and it's locked. The high wire with a logo that you can get from the, from the advertising company website, says a JPEG, printed at a t-shirt outlet for about two quid. That's the attire to wear. Navy blue trousers, navy blue t-shirt, not a hat like this blacklisting hat. Go in your normal wear and you will not be noticed, you will be hidden in plain sight. That's the way to do it.